Hey you folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to another episode of our Learning Godot series where we're making the classic Asteroid game as a way to learn the Godot game engine, especially uh, for those of us who may be migrating from Unity and just uh, see how things work slightly differently in Godot and where what things work exactly the same. We're currently here on step four. Currently we've got the ability, hang on, let me switch over to Godot and show you. We've got a little flying ship that can move around and can bump into asteroids. These are physics enabled and we can bump into things. We also have our screen looping set up, which feels great. But we currently don't have anything in our code that lets us know when we've bumped into an asteroid. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and do that. And for that, we're gonna learn the signaling system, which I really do think is one of the strengths of Godot. Obviously signals and events and notifications and listeners exist in lots of different languages and things, but I really like the way that it's been done in Godot is really kind of a first class thing. The advantage of signals is that it uh, provides you with code that is less tightly coupled. Um, when you're trying to register that something has happened somewhere in the game, uh, you could code all kinds of things kind of directly and hard coded. But with a signaling architecture in place, you get this much slicker system where all you do is you have one object sort of emit a signal and said, hey, this thing happened. And then you have other objects that are connected that listen for those signals and then act upon them. And it does tend to make your, your code a lot more flexible and a lot easier to have more things hook into various events that are happening. So what we want is we want to hook into the physics system and say, listen, I, I know there's a signal that happens when there's a collision. I want to be able to register it. So first we can actually see very easily what all the signals are available uh, right away. If I select a node, like say my player node over here, and my player is a rigid body, which is a collision object, which is a node 2D, which is a canvas item, which is a node. That's the entire structure of this class. Um, there's a tab over here called node. If I click on that, by default, set signals. There's also a group thing that we might use later on, but it's got a signals tab over here. This is every single signal that an object can send in, in the game. And this is our player object, and it's got some signals from rigid body, and then so on and so on and so forth. It's also really easy to make your own custom signals. Like, I could literally say, I've got a new signal called um, signal foo. And then all of a sudden now I have a custom signal called signal foo. I can, in my code, decide to emit it, signal foo dot emit. And if anyone was listening for signal foo, they have now been signal thwart. Um, this can also take parameters like um, A, B, and C. And so I can send one, two, and three as part of the signal. That works perfectly fine. You can see in the editor as well, you get info about that immediately. Oh, how wonderful is that? Great, great, great stuff. Now we don't need to make a custom signal right now because all we want to do right now is listen for a collision, which in this case with rigid body 2D, it is body entered that we're using, which does seem a little weird. Like if you're looking for something called collision or something, the reason for it is um, there's a couple of different ways to process these, these quote unquote like collisions or triggers. Um, but a lot of times they'll be named body entered. So like there's also an area 2D. Area 2D is probably the best equivalent in Godot to a trigger in Unity, as opposed to a collision, right? A collision is an actual hit, an actual bump, whereas a trigger is just, hey, something has entered my my area, right? Um, either I'm some sort of static zone in a level or even I'm some object moving around, but I don't actually respond to a physics hit, but I do want to register when something is inside or overlapping me in some way. Um, and so I think those tend to be called body entered consistently throughout Godot, whether or they represent a trigger or a collision, which I think is a nice way to do it. Now, how do we actually, so in player, what I want to do right now is I just want to have a function that just prints something out to the log when we get hit. How do we do that? So, I mean, conceptually, we're gonna to wanna to have something like on hit. And all we want it to do right now is print, I was hit, just so that we know that things are working. So how do we get there? Well, um, oh, first of all, we remember to put in a colon. We're gonna go and reintroduce our on ready, sorry, our ready function here. This runs one time for object. And we're gonna first, we're gonna to try to listen to the signal via code. Now this signal exists as just an object that we can interact with. You see, it's got a funky little signal, a symbol here to show that it is a signal. And I can connect to this signal and I have to feed it a callback. So I'm gonna feed it on, <clears throat> on hit over here. So in theory, when body entered gets signaled, it should call on hit. Now on hit technically passes a body. I don't know if it matters if we accept the body or not. We're gonna put it in, I'm gonna try to take it out in a second. Right now, and we'll tell you this, if I hit play, we're not gonna see anything in the log. If we look down here, if I bump into the asteroid, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because for whatever reason, and I guess it has to do with, you know, minimizing unnecessary overhead, by default, 
Unity rigid bodies don't actually listen or monitor for contact. They don't trigger any code on collision, um, other than the physics engine doing physics-y things by having things bump into another. If we want to be notified when something, a collision happens, we have to enable contact monitoring. We also have to set max contacts, which also defaults to zero. So yeah, requires a value greater than zero and contact monitor be sent to true to start registering contacts. Now, I don't know if there is a reason why you should limit it to like five. Okay, only call, you know, this, so the body entered, this would at most be called five times per frame. Or if we set it to something like this, like if it's not actually happening 100,000 times per frame, is there a problem with setting a high number this way? I don't know. Um, so we'll set, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll just set something to 20. We're just gonna pick some arbitrary number that should be more than the number of contacts we're ever looking for. I'm not sure what the best practice will be for this. In practice, maybe one is gonna be more than enough most of the time, to be honest. But I'll just set some number well, actually, in this case, it really won't matter because um, the player is basically going to die on a single contact anyway. But we'll set it to 20 and we'll see. It. So now if I hit play, I think we're going to see I was hit in the console. Hey, there it is. I was hit. If I move away and I bump into it again. Oops. Or attempt to do so. There it is. I was hit again. And one more time for good luck. There you go. I was hit again. Great. So this is how you listen to a signal. Um, by registering via code. And if you're working in C Sharp, you're going to have to do something very similar to that. But we can also use the editor to do this in maybe a more convenient way. I can, with a player selected, go over to node, look at the signal I care about, body entered. I can say, ah, I'd like to connect to the signal, please. And yep, yeah, my script, my player, we're going to have a receiver called on body entered. I'm going to hit connect. What it's going to do for me, it's going to make a little function in here. And this has been wired up. You can see there's a little green icon over here and a little green icon over here. This is showing that this function is connected to a signal. And we can see that and we can connect or disconnect it. So I don't actually have to manually call to connect to it. Um, there's gonna be some times you're gonna wanna manually call. There's sometimes you're gonna be very happy to use the editor. You know, whatever works best for you, works best for you, great. Okay, so now we can go again and say something like, um, uh, player was hit by and then, oops, body.name. Can we do Python style, like F strings? I'm not sure, I'll have to look into that. Um, but now, this should still write into the console. There you go, player was hit by asteroid dash big. And again. And that's without us having to explicitly listen to this event, which is handy dandy. I like that, it's great. Um, what was my next note? Oh yeah, player area 2D refactor. And I mean, we're not properly responding to the signal yet, but that's sort of gonna be the next step more over here. Um, let's talk about this area. So instead of player being a rigid body, if we wanted to write our own code to move things around, and let's say we were unhappy with the fact that when the player hit here and died, maybe it shouldn't be shoving the asteroid around. Because we can have the asteroid, the player die right away. Uh, we could do Q free, there you go. So what this does is this will destroy this game object, the player game object, um, after the, the next frame, so in between frames. This incidentally is the same way that Unity works. In Unity, you would call like destroy on a game object, right? Um, but the game object doesn't actually get removed from the scene until the end of the frame, uh, which can occasionally lead to some really wonky logic things. So it's actually something you have to, you have to keep track of that. Uh, classically, there's a lot of times when we're having to do, um, we're having to set our transform dot parent to be null as part of the destruction just to stop other processing from happening and things like that. Anyway, it's just much more clear and explicit here that we are freeing this object, we're deleting this object, we're destroying it, we're removing it from the scene, but it's being queued. It's gonna be done in between frames over here. So if I do this now, boop, the player goes away. So the question is when the player blows up, should it knock the asteroid around, yes or no? If the answer might be no, then you might want to consider redoing the player here and instead being based on rigid body, having it based on area 2D. Because again, area 2D, which does send from collision object, right? If we clear this out, uh, node 2D, collision object 2D. Uh, yeah, 
So we've got collision object 2D, area 2D, and then a physics body. Everything under physics body has extra code for registering as something that can be affected by physics. And area 2D doesn't get affected by physics ever. So we'd have to write our own velocity code, but area 2D does send signals for when another body has entered its area. Um, and so depending on what you're trying to do, you're gonna do that. When we do bullets later, that's how we're gonna do it because bullets aren't gonna be affected by physics. They're not gonna do any physics. All they're gonna do is have an area 2D, wait till they intersect um, an asteroid and then tell the asteroid, hey, you should shatter into some pieces. So we'll be revisiting that later on. Um, I guess this is it if I wanna keep the structure. It feels a little short, but I think this is, this is fine. We now correctly respond to a hit. I want to discuss signals. So in the next episode, we're gonna have the player die and respawn. And most importantly, we're finally gonna talk about spawning prefabs via code. And I have prefabs in quotes over here because again, Godot doesn't actually have anything called prefabs. Instead, scenes, and what we would call in Unity scenes and prefabs are one and the same in Godot and they're all just called scenes. So we'll be spawning quote unquote scenes. Our, Asteroid is gonna be a scene, our player is gonna be a scene. We're gonna be instantiating those into our main scene like that. So I'll probably still refer to use the term prefab when I'm discussing these little objects that are gonna be loaded into a scene, but the Godot parlance is scene everywhere. And which is fine mechanically. I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying that's incorrect, but I might still use different words when I'm using these scenes in different ways. But that'll have to wait until next time. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.